Good morning, YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to try to make a video kind of talking through making a pair of brass knuckles. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a whole lot of things, uh, tools, th things of that nature to make your own set of knuckles. Uh, but there are tools that make it convenient. Uh, and so I'll be talking you through making a pair out of uh, brass stock. And this is uh, half inch thick and three inches wide. Uh, and you'll need at least a four inch piece to make a, a pair of brass knuckles. Let me, let me confirm that with you guys before. Five inches. So you at least need half inch thick, could be thinner. I like half inch thick, uh, three inches wide and five inches long to make a pair of four finger knuckles. Uh, and so first thing is a piece of brass. After that, you'll need to drill your finger holes. Um, I like to start with 22 millimeter uh, hole saw. And you can clamp it in a vise and do it with a drill if you don't have a drill press, but I have a drill press. Uh, and before you do that, you'll need to do your stencil uh, on the brass. And so I'll show you what I got here. And the next part of the video will be uh, drilling the holes. So after you've got your holes drilled, these are just the circular holes. Uh, that's the first step of your finger hole process. Uh, what I like to do before I over all the holes is go ahead and go to my bandsaw and uh, cut the squares out, uh, you know, uh, the squares in, in the bar stock. And that helps me with the jig that I use to over the holes and everything. Now. When I first started, I used to cut these things out with an uh, angle grinder, uh, and it's messy and not clean. Uh, it's a much more precarious process, but a bandsaw is the way to go. Uh, and so what I use is this DeWalt uh, porter bandsaw with this swag uh, porter band table, uh, and this is a great setup. It uh, It is fantastic, and what makes it works so well is you get the foot pedal with it uh, and that foot pedal makes everything easy so So you can see that bandsaw goes to that brass very easily, very clean. Uh, bandsaw's the way to go. Not very expensive piece of equipment. You could even get one from Vibor or, or Harbor Freight. Um, and with good saw bands, uh, man, these things last for a long time. I've been making these knuckles for four or five months now and have made a hundred of them easily uh, between the four fingers, two fingers, single fingers, uh, amongst other things. And I've only, this is only the second blade. So your expendable items uh, last a long time with brass. So it's uh, definitely worth the investment. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this other one and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, cue you all back in when I open out the finger holes. Okay, so the next part of this process is uh, 
ovaling out the holes. And I do that before I cut out the shape because I want to be able to get a pretty good hold on a, uh, on the piece of brass with the jig. Now, I use this jig. Now I'll tell you that for months, I would just use my hands. Uh, I've got a DeWalt 616 router mounted under this table uh, to this piece of aluminum. Uh, and it's, it's something I rigged up based off of a router table used for wood uh, because you don't see a lot of people sharing information on how to make things out of brass. Uh, but, so it's a, it's a learning process. It is a, uh, you know, trial and error. And, and while I did a lot of things with my hands initially, uh, I would oval out all the holes. I would, you know, do all the, the fine tuning shaping after I cut out the shape with the bandsaw, uh, all holding the brass in my hands. And 95% of the time, it went well. But every now and then, this carbide bit will grab the brass because the brass isn't very uh, consistent. There'll be some pieces that are, are harder than others. And it'll grab and it'll snatch that thing right out of your hand. Uh, and if you're just doing the sides of the brass, it's not a huge deal. But if you're doing the holes of the brass and it snatches it out of your hand and there's nowhere for it to go except uh, being slung around on that router bit, uh, it brings your fingers with it. Uh, and I've had several incidences where it's, uh, you know, got me pretty good. Uh, and that last time where it uh, ripped that fingernail off, uh, I started thinking of safety measures. Uh, and so the safety measure is this jig and a foot pedal. I was running it just, I powered it on and I would uh, use it by hand. And then if something went crazy, uh, like it started slinging the brass, uh, there's, you had to risk yourself uh, walking over to this thing slinging around at a high rate of speed to turn this router off. Uh, and so uh, the foot pedal is the way to go. So if you're thinking about doing something like this, I'll save you a lot of uh, potential danger. And get you a foot pedal straight out the gate. Even if you decide to do it by hand, uh, the foot pedal, if something goes crazy, just let off the foot pedal and everything is uh, under control. It's like riding a motorcycle. Pull the clutch, everything's under control, at least for a little while. Uh, but I would recommend just one of these little jigs, uh, get them off of Amazon or whatever, and it'll lock this uh, thing into place and it allows you to operate this thing uh, with, uh, in a much safer capacity. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these finger holes on both sets. Uh, and then I'll come back to you all when I go to shape them with the bandsaw. Okay, so now that the uh, holes are over up, that's like the hardest part of the job. Um, depending on what your design is, that's is the one that is the most uh, dangerous and it takes the most time. 
And so now uh, it's time to take it to the bandsaw. And what I do is I won't show y'all uh, me cutting the brass again. It's redundant, but I try to cut as close to the shape that I have etched out in the brass as possible with the bandsaw. That way, when I move it back to the router table to clean it up, uh, it's easier. Now, some people that make brass knuckles, they, uh, mo the vast majority of them CNC cut uh, the brass knuckles and it just comes out, you know, uh, the way they do uh, based on the computer program. But a lot of people that hand make them, uh, they use a Dremel and things like that in order to, to shape them up and, and tighten everything up. Uh, I use the same type of bit just on a router table. Uh, and it's, uh, to me, a faster and a cleaner process. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and cut these things out on the uh, bandsaw. And then I'll uh, come back to you all when I shape them uh, back on the router table. Okay. <clears throat> done with the bandsaw and so what we get is a basic shape as close to the shape that you have etched out in the brass as possible um one that bandsaw lasts a lot longer than almost all your other expendables uh and it's it just speeds up the process uh the bandsaw goes through the brass pretty quick uh everything else is pretty slow even the hole saw and the drill press uh everything else you use uh, is slow compared to that bandsaw. Uh, so everything you can do with the bandsaw uh, will sp speed up your process. And so what I do is once again, I, uh, I lock it into the jig and then I go ahead and shape as closely to possible uh, my design. Uh, and the, the jig, once again, like I said, makes everything easier. You can lock it into a vise and use a Dremel or a Fordham or another rotary tool and get the same effect. Uh, I just find that the router table is a much more controlled uh, environment to do so. Uh, and I've tried to use the Fordham to like overlock the holes and things like that before, but you get in there with that rotary tool and it'll do the same thing. It'll run on you. Uh, it'll jump, it'll do all kinds of things and it, it snatch. Uh, it's, it's just not as a, much of a control process as this. And there's inherent danger in, in power tools and everything that you use. But uh, I find that this system that I have now is, it invites the least amount of chance for a mistake. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a, a, a few seconds of me shaping this thing on this uh, table with this jig.
And so you could see very quickly uh, with this router table, you can get that done. Uh, using a Fordham or a Dremel tool would take two, three times longer than that. Uh, and if you heard, when it would buck back up against me, you could probably hear that. Uh, that was those catches. Uh, and if you were holding it with your hand, applying the pressure against that carbide bit when it bucks, it'll snatch it out of your hands if you're not holding it tight enough. So any break in concentration, that thing will rack your knuckles or it'll pull your finger into this bit. So you don't want to do that. You, uh, I definitely recommend the jig. So I will uh, go ahead and finish shaping these up and then I'll come back to you all and show you how I round the edges on the brass knuckles. So now we've got our uh, basic shape. So at this point, you've got your brass knuckles pretty much. I mean, they're usable brass knuckles, but now you want to make them comfortable, uh, fit. And so when I first started doing these, I would put them in the vise and then I would take a Dremel and I would round over all the edges. Uh, and it works. Uh, with some patient, you, patience, you can make it look pretty good, but the consistency isn't that great. Uh, and it always bothered me. So I was looking around uh, before I started messing around with this brass. I didn't know much about metalworking, metalworking tools. The extent of my tool knowledge is basically automotive and motorcycle, uh, you know, working on stuff. And it's still not that extensive. Uh, and so I was doing some research on metalworking tools and, you know, trying to find uh, better ways to improve my process. And I came across this guy that was talking about this router bit that was made for stainless steel, uh, mild steel or stainless, uh, uh, to round over like sheet metal and things like that, you know, when they're working. And uh, I was like, if it can handle steel, it's, brass should be a breeze. Uh, so I ordered it. And that's when I put the router table together uh, and, and kind of did the whole carbide bit and this router bit at the same time. Uh, and this thing is amazing. So I'm going to install this in the uh, router. My brain stopped working for a minute. And then uh, uh, pay special attention to how this looks now. I'll do another comparison. Uh, but this router bit makes a world of difference in the look and function of the uh, of the knuckle itself. Okay, I'll show you uh, the difference between right after being shaped uh, and then actually running the router bit on. Uh, it's night and day difference. So you've got That router bit makes the world of difference, and it is a uh, it is a much superior option to uh, Fordham or a Dremel. Uh, it works great. Now the bit is expensive. I think I spent like those bits are like 130 bucks a piece, but they last for a long time. Uh, and the quality of product that you get. Uh, using the bit is apparent. Uh, and so I've been making these things for months. Uh, and I will say that uh, they, they sell pretty good. Uh, my I sell them off my Instagram. It's uh, Knuckles by Norris, I think, or Chris Norris Tattoos. E either one of those uh, Instagram pages, you could see some of the stuff that I make. And so after this process, uh, it's pretty much just dressing them up. You polish them. I do a lot of uh, hand stamping uh, and things of that nature. You can drill holes in them, add lanyards. I do those to a lot of the two finger knuckles. Makes them easier to pull out of your pocket. Uh, add beads to them, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how you make brass knuckles. I thought I would uh, do this tutorial just uh, because there's not many floating around on YouTube. There's only a few. Uh, and if you were interested in just making your own, uh, 
it gives you something to do, tinker around in the garage, uh, keep yourself busy, or you can make some for your friends. All right, y'all have a good one.